was Survivor 40 never looked so good. Oi, a drink before a war is always a good idea. Hello and welcome back everyone to a video series dedicated show on CBS that's all about spreading truth, lies, and rumors. That's right, I'm talking about Survivor Season 40, Winners at War, Episode 1. Oh my gosh, we have finally made it. That's right, this momentous occasion. I, this is a season I think a ton of people wanted to see. I don't think anyone really thought it was going to happen, but here we are talking about it. I'm super excited and we just had a jam-packed two-hour premiere. We got a lot of stuff to unpack, so I'm just going to get into it. All the competitors show up via two boats onto this ginormous sandbar ready to commemorate the beginning of something special. And that's when Jeff Probst pours everyone a spritz of champagne as they thought one bottle could quench the thirst of over 20 people. And after commemorating by having their little shot of champagne, they do mass littering. And that's when Jeff decides to dump all this information onto them all at once. It starts off by giving them uh, their buffs to see who's going to be on the call, which is the red tribe, and Sele, who is going to be the blue tribe. We have both teams set. That's when Jeff decides to talk about the fire tokens. This is a new thing that's happening this season. They're going to be used as currency. Um, as of right now, we know that they can buy luxury items when you have enough. You can buy like tarps, pillows, blankets. You can also use them to buy advantages in the game. And we figure out that it's something to do with Edge of Extinction. Oh yeah, that's right. Jeff drops that. Oh yeah. There's the Edge of Extinction Island right behind us where you're going to be alone, it's going to be dark, it's going to be sad, and you're going to be there if you're a loser. And then we get to, oh yeah, let's just go into the first competition of the game, and this is going to be a luxury competition or a necessity competition where you're going to get flint and rice as the losers are not going to get fire or rice until after the first tribal, which is going to be the next day, not even that night because this is also an immunity challenge. This is the first, what, what is happening? They are just dumping all this information, let alone that this is going to be not only a, a million dollar game, this is going to be a two million dollar game. So having the bragging rights of being the winner of all the winners, you're going to take home major bank. But let's get into this competition where it's essentially Lord of the Rings going to the beach as there are going to be two people from each team going head to head to head to head. And they're going to be running to get this one ring, this one life preserver, grab it, pull it all the way over to their pole and touch the pole. The first team to get three points wins, wins immunity, wins flint, wins rice, wins the peace of mind as the other one is going to be starving and sad and going to tribal. Let's get into this immunity challenge. And this is one where we played four heats and the first round was pretty standard. We had Yule and Tyson take over Ethan and Jeremy kind of handedly, and they got the first point for Dakal. The Heat 2 was the best Heat of this whole entire immunity challenge, the first immunity challenge at least, as it had Natalie and Parvati going up against Kim and Sarah. And this one was fantastic. We had some hair pulling, we had Sele looking to get their first points and that's when Natalie was inches away and then Kim and Sarah were able to pull her away from it putting Parvati in the driver's seat and she was inches away from touching it and getting Sele their first points however this momentum shift happens when they lose the grip on the ring and Sarah and Kim were able to pull the ring all the way over and touch it, oh my gosh, Dakal gets it to nothing. This was the game changer. Now Sally was able to get the momentum a little bit on their side as Boston Rob and Ben were able to get the first points for them. But in heat four, that's when Amber and Sarah were able to put the nail in the coffin, get the third and final point, and that's when Dakal was able to get immunity. And this, let me tell you something right now. This was a perfect first competition. Having immunity right off the bat was so much fun and it was so intense. I was on the edge of my seat. Now I'll be honest, day ones are never my favorite part of Survivor, but this one was different. This was everybody using strategy right off the bat. Nobody was running off too quickly to look for hidden immunity idols. We did see in Sele that Denise and Adam were kind of 
walking around looking for water, but having very strong strategy conversations. And that's when Sally was doing a head count and figured those two were gone. And that put an instant target on both their backs. On the Decal side, we had Yule. And Yule, I think, is the MVP of this episode for multitude of reasons but he hasn't played Survivor in like 13 years. He decided to bring together kind of the outsiders, the free agents, the people that have only played one season that maybe not had the flashiest game and bring them together. And it, right now we have Yule, Sophie, Nick, and Wendell as a really strong foursome. Yule brings up the Poker Alliance and apparently there's this like Poker Night Live that's happened that had multiple people on Survivor like Jeremy, like Kim, like Boston Rob, like Tyson and you wants to take these people out because of their relationships. So let's go back to LA and they're talking, they're making moves, people are making alliances and Boston Rob is trying to make as many alliances as he can with Parvati, with what is deemed as the old school alliance. We have some old school versus new school happening within the tribe dynamics and Boston Rob wants to hang out with Parvati. We also have Danny talking about wanting to get Boston Rob out and it looked like it could have been a good blind side until Ben, was questioned and Ben wants to say like, oh, Boston Rob is like the godfather. He's using this mental mind tricks. All Boston Rob was doing was asking questions and kind of putting pressure on Ben and Ben was folding faster than a lawn chair. It was, it was really bad on Ben because he just looked like a newbie out there and he just kept on like blabbing. However, Boston Rob is finding himself on the higher end of this situation and in this tribe. I mean, it's absolutely insane. He was just on last season giving information to people on how to play this game. He's played it the most times. He's won one season. Why not get him out? Nobody wants to get him out. They decide they want to put, take out Denise or Adam and their names are floating around everywhere. However, that's when Adam and Essentially, Ben were talking, and then Adam starts floating around Natalie and Jeremy. They have the stronger connection, not Adam and Denise. They just met each other, but Jeremy and Natalie played together. They have a strong alliance with one another. At the first tribal, we have a little bit of whispers between Ben and Jeremy. Jeremy is figuring something is wrong. Something is amiss. They, he thinks Adam's going. Denise is going. This should be an easy discussion. This shouldn't even be a discussion. We should just vote and get him out now. However, I think there was something going on when he looked at Parvati. Parvati made eye contact with Jeremy and instantly moved away and Jeremy instantly was like, wait a minute. He turns over to Boston Rob, the same thing happens. That's when everybody decides to vote. We get one or two Adams, but we get majority of Natalie getting voted off and Natalie is the first one voted off heading to Edge of Extinction, but she has to bequeath. I don't know who decided on bequeath. I do not want to talk about be bequeathing anything to anybody. I don't even like saying it. I said it like three times and it makes me my skin crawl. She gives her uh, token to Jeremy, of course, as they are buddy buddies and she knows that he didn't vote her out. She gives her fire token to him. She goes off to the Edge of Extinction and it's very, very dark. She has her only torch. We've come to find out that she has to do something to earn a fire token. What she has to do is go up and climb up this ginormous mountain, ginormous hill, ginormous something. And she's like having to walk all the way up there, I guess before the sunset, she finds a placard. And what she finds is a hidden immunity idol. And after the second immunity challenge, whichever team loses, she can sell to a person on that tribe for one fire token. Speaking of the second immunity challenge, let's just jump into it as this is a good old fashioned survivor obstacle course where the teams are gonna to have to jump into the boat, have to row this thing down to a bag that's tied up. They have to untie the bag, get to another spot where they have to jump over these box steps, swim in, get onto this cargo net, jump off of that, get back onto the beach, when they untie their bag, there's going to be three tokens in there with numbers on them. They have to do the locks, untake out these rings, throw these rings, get them on these specific paddles that'll flip up. The first team to get all their paddles up and finish this challenge wins immunity, does not have to go to tribal council. And Sele is looking to not have to go to tribal council as Denise does not want to go to every tribal council like she did on her previous season. Early on, it's not looking good for Sele as they are running into things. I'm, I'm sorry, but as a, t as a tribe, I did not think this was going to be good, a good thing. I thought Sele was going to lose this thing as they get down early. Boston Rob was taking a long time to get the bag of rings undone. 
they finally get the bag of rings. They're going back. The call has a big, they have a big old head start, a lead on Sele. Sele is getting through the barrel roll. And let me tell you right now, the barrel roll looked the toughest out of everything. However, Boston Rob uses his dad pool skills to put everybody on his shoulders, literally, and fling them up and have them jump over this barrel like it was like everyone was free willy jumping over that kid like eh. Boston Rob <laughs> Boston Rob should not have gotten rid of Natalie because Jeremy and Rob were the last two people and it looked like Jeremy was trying to drown Boston Rob while trying to get <laughs> I don't I think Boston Rob was just really really exhausted but it looked like Jeremy was trying to like legit drown him by accident but they finally get everybody over, they get onto the thing, Adam takes forever to get the uh, lock undone. Over on the Dakal side, they have their rings, Wendell gets the first one, he's trying to get the second one, they finally get their rings on Sele. Sele lets Jeremy do his thing and he is like proficient at the granny toss and he is just granny tossing these rings over and over again and he is like a machine like he does this on the weekends like he is a professional ring tosser as he got he doesn't go one for one two for two but he goes three for three completing the comeback of Sele back at the decal side that's when everybody's talking and Tyson is throwing out that we need to get Sandra or Tony out ASAP which I think is a great decision get Sandra out her resume speaks for herself she's she has two wins already. If she gets any further in this game, she's going to be really, really tough to get out. However, what's really going to make it tough for her to get out is because Natalie sends the hidden immunity idol to Sandra and Sandra instantly pays for it. It's not even a, a second doesn't even go by that Sandra's like, maybe I shouldn't? No, she's going to pay for that immunity idol. She gives Natalie her token via her little uh, messenger bag and she has security. So Sandra goes around all everyone, spreading truth, lies, and rumors as she says, we're not gonna get Sandra out, we have to get somebody else out. And it's between Amber, Tyson, and Kim. And it's all because of Yule's talk of the Poker Alliance. And it's something that Tyson said while on that Poker Night live thing, where he's like, if we're ever on an island together, this is the Power Alliance, right? <laughs> that was really, Poor choice of words because guess what? You're all on an island together. And Tyson instantly goes into survival mode. He instantly thinks, this is not gonna be my game to push people around and dictate what the vote is going to be. He goes into instant survivor mode and he's like, as long as it's not me, I'm cool. I feel bad that it's either gonna be Amber or Kim, but I need to save myself. And so not only do they get Tony on Yule's foursome to make it a fivesome, they also get Tyson, they also get Sandra. So now the two people out on the outskirts are Kim and Amber and they decide to split the vote just in case one of them has a hidden immunity idol. Kim is feeling very sad as she is, does has no idea how it feels to be on the outskirts until today. And they go to tribal, they're talking, they're doing their thing and that's when they decide to just put to a vote. There's not really a lot of whispers in this tribal and there's one vote for Nick there's like three votes for Kim and the rest are for Amber as Amber is sent to Edge of Extinction and of course she gives her fire token to her husband Rob, which we all knew that was gonna happen. And essentially Amber was voted out because of her connections with Rob, with Kim, with Tyson. She hasn't played this game in forever and I think that's also another part why she got cut so early is because she even said in that tribal, hey, I'm kind of slow at this, I haven't been around this, and it just seems like everything is moving so quickly. It is because it is moving so quickly. When somebody's not picking up on the speed or talking, I mean, Amber was talking about how Tony is running to all these people talking, and that was kind of out of her league because she thinks that it's going too quickly. Well, guess what? That's the speed. That's not too quickly. That's the base level speed that you have to be playing this game at all times, and Sad for Amber, she got cut because she just could not keep up. But that's where we end this episode of this two hour. What'd you think about this episode? Let me know that in the comment section below. I wanna hear anything and everything, every but thing you have to say. Who are you rooting for? What alliance are you rooting for? 
Who do you want to see win? Who do you definitely don't want to see win? And are you excited about this season? Let me know that in the comment section below. This is something I've been excited for ever since they announced it from last season. I love last season, but this one is shaping up to be incredible. And I want to know anything and everything you all have to say about this season, about the competitors, about the game. What do you think about the fire tokens? Do you think it's going to be an interesting twist or do you think it's like, oh my gosh, why are we complexing the game? We just want to see how these winners are going to go up against these winners. And we kind of just want to see them in there just going at it without all these gimmicks. Let me know that in the comment section below. What do you think about Edge of Extinction? I know why they brought it back because if you bring back all these winners, it's not going to be fun if you just have all your favorites being kicked out one by one by one, back to back to back. And they got all these winners after not having some of these people on this show for 13 to 16 years and just to kick them off right at like <laughs> day three, it would be tough to, it would be a tough pill to swallow. But what do you think about everything that this game has to offer and who do you think is going to win? Let me know that in the comment section below. I am so excited. I cannot wait for episode two, but we have to wait for episode two. I'll be back really, really soon with more. All right. But we have to wait for episode two. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more videos, more general videos, more challenge videos. X on the Beach is on Fridays. Challenge Brief History on Saturdays. I got some challenge content coming, more Survivor content, and more videos in general. I cannot wait to show you everything that's going to be flooding out of here. But keep your eyes peeled, and thank you so much. And until next time, peace.